Welcome to another video interview brought to you by AICHE's Online Community Connected. My name is Christine Chen. I'm the Director of Technical Programming at AICHE, and I'll be your host today. With me are four distinguished gentlemen. We have here Dr. Joseph Miller, CTO and Executive VP at Corning, Dr. Larry Wendling, VP of Corporate Research at 3M, Dr. Sang Tae Kim, the Executive Director at the Mortgage Institute, and Dr. John Anderson, President of the Illinois Institute of Technology. My four guests are among the featured speakers in the 2011 AICHE Annual Meeting Plenary, which is co-sponsored co by the Council for Chemical Research. The focus of this plenary is on chemical science innovation, a look into the future of U.S. chemical enterprise. Dr. Swendling, Kim, Anderson, and Miller, I'm sure you have a lot of interesting experiences to share with us regarding your work in such innovative companies. And innovation is indeed a critical driver for continued industrial growth. I'd like to ask you to look into your crystal ball and tell me what you think is the future, the next big breakthrough in technology, and what tools do we need to get there? So we'll start with you. So I come uh, from a materials company, uh, practice a lot of chemistry. 40 years ago, uh, we changed the way in which communications took place using photons versus electrons with optical fiber. And that continues to be developed. And uh, so uh, in interacting interactions in society, high speed and ubiquitous bandwidth are going to continue to be very important. So you'll see continuous changes in wireless technology and in optical communications. And so uh, really high speed, 60 gigahertz uh, wireless, and, uh, and high speed LAN communications uh, through optical fiber. And uh, even after 40 years, inventions continue uh, to be made to enable. Would you like to add on to that? Sure. Uh, actually, I think it's a good idea sometimes to define what we mean by innovation. And the definition that I like to use is coupling technology with the societal need in a creative fashion to create something of value. So sometimes predictions are a little hard to make about what the society might, uh, might need or want. But I think those are relatively well defined these days uh, in terms of things like uh, energy, uh, water safety, uh, uh, communications. And uh, at 3M, we're an extraordinarily broad-based technology company as well as a broad-based company. So our approach really to innovation is to invest in front of the technology. So when these societal needs begin to appear, we're able to help address those needs from a technology perspective. If I had to pick one thing, I would probably say uh, nanoscale uh, size-dependent properties uh, opening the door to really uh, unexplored areas in material science and physics going forward here to help address all of those areas. That's very interesting. And Dr. Kim, would you like to comment? Yes. Uh, well, I have uh, uh, spent a, a significant part of my career in the pharmaceutical industry where there's a, a, a big uh, jump in value thanks to innovation between the underlying materials, which are relatively inexpensive to make, and then when they transform into pharmaceuticals uh, and life-saving medicines, they uh, have an enormous uh, increase in value. Uh, as we look at the changing world and the connectedness of the world, uh, new technologies and aspects of society like uh, um, uh, like um, uh, social uh, media and, and related infrastructure, the expectation of the uh, patient and the customer on that information content is going to increase dramatically, uh, thereby, uh, thereby opening uh, new doors for innovation for uh, the companies and the research uh, universe. Well, my reason uh, for being is to advance the education of our students, and that uh, is uh, dependent on where technology is going. Uh, I think all of us have to think about, especially in engineering uh, education, think about getting students ready for their first day after graduation and their 25th year after graduation. We generally uh, require different uh, educational curricular aspects. But um, I, I would say as a consumer going right now, and something that, that, that I think would be important to chemical engineers as well as other engineers. So thanks for those great responses. Um, I did notice that there's a common theme in the area of material. So I'd like to ask Dr. Anderson, 
In terms of um, education, is there, should there be a stronger emphasis in the area of material science among our engineers? And then perhaps for the rest of the group, take a look at, in, into what um, materials are the different applications that we're using uh, innovative materials. Well, the distinction between undergraduate education and graduate, uh, the focus more on the undergraduate, I do think that there is a need for more uh, instruction in materials that it should be integrated into chemical processes as well, and, and sources of fiber optics, making the fiber, fiber optics. So, uh, yes, I would agree, but it shouldn't be standalone courses. I think it should be integrated in the curriculum. Like so, I totally, totally agree. We focus on ceramics and glass. There's a lot to be done in glass. Of course, the catalytic converter are, are the, is the basis for inventions coming out of our laboratory, diesel particulate filter. So high temperature ceramics, lots of movement in glass, uh, and lots of integration of disciplines uh, to create the applications in a unique way. What we depend on. I very much agree with the com uh, comments on uh, materials and process engineering, but I'd even extend it further into coupling these two capabilities into electronics and software these days. Um, particular things that I can, I can think of are things like uh, in the communications area, developing a transparent, highly conductive electrodes for next generation touch screens, for example, in the energy as well as, uh, say, fuel cell type applications, and then in healthcare, which is a very important, actually using some of our nano uh, structuring capabilities to develop things like uh, solid and high, uh, hollow microneedles for advanced uh, drug delivery uh, and vaccines. And given the chemical engineering uh, curriculum with its foundations in the chemical sciences and physical sciences, mathematics and the biological sciences, and it's the perfect setting for the chemical engineers to have an impact in materials research and technology. Great. Um, and I think that there's a lot to be done in the materials area, and it's definitely on the innovation forefront. And at this time, I'd like to wrap up our interview, and thank you very much for your time. I'm sure we're going to hear great things at the plenary. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.